着你。All the road is watching, and I'm confused in troubled times. He's there. Friends, it's great to see you again just for another wee thought from the tractor. As I shared once before, being a farmer, I suppose, spent half my life basically on the tractor seat in one way or another. And sometimes in some of the more boring jobs, you get plenty of time to think. And I just want to bring you a few wee thoughts. And I'm very excited always about badges. As you can see, I'm in a 1630 John Deere. These were made between 1973 and 1979. A very popular tractor, and it's one of the three cylinders. A lot of times before that there were just two cylinders, but here, with this wee beauty here today, and uh, having a lovely wee drive there in a minute ago, so 1630. But you see, friends, it's the badge. Always look at the badge. And the badge in the front of this tractor, you'll see the wee deer jumping down, because up until 1999, in fact, up to the year 2000, that's the way the badge was, how the wee badge was, the wee deer was jumping down. But when the millennium came, year 2000, John Deere decided they would have the badge and the deer jumping up looking into a new millennium and so on. And you know friends, every time I, I look at the badge and I look at the wee deer jumping down, it reminds me a lot of life because an awful lot of life can be, can be downhill. A lot, an awful lot of life can be, in fact, you can be in the valleys. And I was, any time I'm thinking, I look at the badge, I always think of like the Sam as David, for instance, and how a lot of his life, even though he was a chosen son of God, even though he was son of Jesse, even though he was that God himself said that David was a man after his own heart, in fact, said that twice. But a lot of David's life, he was in fact in the valleys, in the pits of despair. But then it came to a stage in his life when he was able to write the like of Psalm 23. He'd, he'd got over the depths in the valleys. He began to appreciate really what God had done for him and how he began then to repeat the like of Psalm 23, which is one of my favourite psalms, and I know I'm sure it's one of yours also. If you know anything about the Bible at all, or maybe you've been at a funeral or whatever, you would understood Psalm 23, it had been sung or whatever. When David came to a place when he could say, but the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Ye prepared a table before me, and the presence of my enemies. Ye anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. O oh, friends, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The psalmist David had came to a place when he could truly understand and understood what God had done for him, that God had restored his soul in the first place. And friends, just for a few moments from this tractor, I want to tell you just three things that the psalmist David had discovered in Psalm 23. Three things that the world can't give you. When I say the world, I mean religion, I mean education, I mean science, I mean physics. All the things that the world can't do for you, the psalmist David had discovered it here in Psalm 23. He discovered that the world can't restore your soul. This soul that was lost in Adam, how we became separated from God all because 
of the fall away back in the Garden of Eden and for every generation ever since. The psalmist, David, he had discovered, but he restoreth my soul. God restored his soul. In other words, how a human being now can have fellowship with God and how we can walk with God once more, all by the grace of God and the mercy of God. The psalmist, David, was able to say, but, but he restoreth my soul and how that soul can be restored by the grace of God. Another thing that the psalmist David discovered was, he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And every single human being, we're born with an emptiness inside. We're, we're, we're born with a void, something that's missing inside us. Now, we don't, know, we don't know what it is, you see. For many people, even they've never heard the gospel, even they've never heard the Bible, even once in their life, they, they may worship the moon, they may worship trees, they may worship the sun because there's an emptiness inside, you see. I still remember a professor one time, he was at university, and he was asked the question, what is the greatest want within all the students? And he said, emptiness. He says, they're empty inside. That's why they're seeking out life's pleasures through drugs and alcohol and all the stuff of the day, because they're empty inside. But friends, that void, that emptiness can only be filled by Almighty God, you see. And the psalmist David discovered that. He says, but the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want because this emptiness has been restored, you see, because my, because my soul has been restored. And then another thing that the psalmist David discovered, you know, and he says, there you I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because within mankind, you see, there's always a fear of death itself. You know, we'll, we'll maybe worry how we die, whether we die from a dreadful disease and it can be slow and painful. But for the Christian, you see, we don't fear death for the sake of it because we know it's just a doorway opening up into another level of life completely, you see. And the psalmist David had discovered that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And friends, just quite recently, I read a story. A man actually told me this story. First of all, I was asked, have you ever been to the Middle East? This fellow was just back from a holiday out in Israel. And I thought, I've never been much further than my local doorstep, really. And I had to smile to myself. Oh, he says, you should go, he says, because it brings the Bible alive when you see the different things and the different areas of, and, and all the biblical names that we can understand. He says, I was standing on the very mountain where, where David fought Goliath. And he says, it just brings it so real. And I thought of this story of a, man, a fellow called Peter. And Peter was one of these mature students. And, and part of the course was he got six weeks out in the Middle East and he could pick where he wanted to go to. And he decided he'd go to this family called the Bedouin family. They were actually farmers, basically. And he said he went out with them. And this young girl, she was the shepherd girl. And the sheep, she took the sheep across the mountains just the same as they did in Abraham's day. And then how the Bible became alive. He said, Psalm 23 became alive. The first thing he saw, this was a farmer's son, by the way. He discovered that the sheep always follow something. They follow the shepherd. And well, I could have told them that. My cows always followed me, you see, at home. I couldn't drive them anywhere. But they followed me. And he said they watched the sheep going out and how they followed the shepherd. And then, friends, the first night he saw something that was mighty because the, the shepherd girl put these sheep into a sort of a compound for the night. It was really a part of an old fort of a thing and how the sheep would begin to lie down. But then all of a sudden, another flock of sheep came in and they thought, what kind of mess is this going to be in the morning? She had 150 sheep, the, the, the shepherd girl that he was with, and here was another 140, 150 sheep going into the same place, you see. But then I saw something else that was lovely. He said, the shepherd girl lay at the gateway. There's this sort of narrow entrance. The sheep was in the compound for the night. They were all lying down and she fell asleep and she lay at the gateway. And he said it brought a life that when the Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the gate. Whoever follows me, I'm the gate. I'm the doorway. And he said, you know, the Psalm 23 became alive because the next day she went out early till pitch black in the morning. And he thought, where's she going at half four in the morning? And she went out about 100 yards and then she started to shout in the sheep. She started to call out the sheep and her sheep got up and the other sheep lay on. And he said, I was amazed when I saw this. And I thought of that wonderful verses in John 10, 27 and 28, these beautiful verses, when he says, my, the Lord says, my sheep will hear my voice. And he says, I know them, they follow me. I will give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And friends, as they moved the sheep, and just her sheep only, the other sheep stayed behind and then she went unto the mountains. And the following night, it became dark very quickly. 
and the darkness came down very quickly and he thought to himself, what's she going to do now? Because this mountain was a dangerous place. There were potholes, there were ravines and all the rest of it. And they were still on the mountainside. And then he said, I saw something. I couldn't believe it. She started to talk to the sheep. She was fo the sheep was following her all day, but all of a sudden the sheep come out round her now. And a wee, I'd call it a holy huddle, just a wee, all the 150 sheep out round her. And she was dead in the middle. And she started to talk to the sheep. She kept talking to them. Friends, she talked them off the mountain. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And I thought to myself, that's where the psalmist David had got that from. That picture, umpteen thousand years later. And here was this shepherd girl just last year, leading the same sheep. She talked to the sheep and she talked them over the mountain. And she talked them off the mountain into a place where it was leveler for the night time. Pictures from the word of God, you see. Another picture he shared with me was a lovely story. Of how the sheep, they're not the brightest of animals, friends. The goats were so clever. The goats would, they knew that they were boss. You, you couldn't tell a goat anything. They were so sure of themselves. And I think of how the Bible talks about the sheep and the goats. And how the, the great separation one day when the sheep will be separated from the goats. The sheep are for heaven, but the goats are for lost eternity. Because he told me in black and white, he says, those goats seem to know it all. They were so bare-faced when she was calling the sheep, she had to call them in wee straight lines. Because if she was at one side of her ravine, she couldn't shout on the sheep. Because the sheep were so stupid, they just jumped down in. Whereas the goat would have found a clever way to get around. The sheep are just not the brightest of animals, and yet our gracious God called his people sheep. And he said, you know, when I looked at that there, and I thought to myself, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And then it finishes in Psalm 23, goodness and mercy. <laughs> How goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord ever. Oh friends, the psalmist David had many a battle, just like the wee deer jumping down through the valleys and struggles and through the mud and the mire of life, of all the physical illnesses, of all the, the spiritual depressions and everything else that can affect humankind. But then the psalmist David came to a place when he knew he no longer was looking down, that he was looking up, you see. He was looking up to heaven. He was looking up to the life that was still to come. Always oh, his goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I, in God's perfect timing, will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, friends, my lovely people, wherever you are, maybe just one person, there's a lot to be said when you look at a badge, isn't there? I wonder if you look at the badge and the John Deere. Are you going down at this minute in time? If, if you withdraw your last physical breath, are you going down? Or are you going up? Are you going up to heaven? Are you going up to the Father's house? To a prepared place for a prepared people. Is it any wonder that the Lord tells us to the beautiful disciples those day, that day when they were in despair, when they were in trouble, oh, it says, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Because in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Come on close here a minute. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you will be also. Oh, friends, where are you going? Do you know where you're going? And if you don't know yet, get down on your knees and cry unto God for mercy. Say, oh, Lord, get me out of these valleys. Get me out of this pit of despair. Get me out of my, out of my son. Lord, I realize you died for me at the cross at Calvary. Oh, Lord, I know you died for me. If there's just one person alive in this world, you died for me, Lord. Oh, Lord, help me to see you more clearly in these days. Help me to be looking up. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, a lost sinner. And by God's sovereign grace, my friends, he can restore your soul. He can fill that emptiness, that void in your life. And he can give you a peace facing physical death itself because you know it's just a gateway to the Father's house. Oh, may God bless you all. May you be encouraged these, this day. May this wee bit of a DVD, this wee bit of video, may there even one word in it, encourage you in this day and this journey of life itself. May God bless you all.